What's up, y'all? Back at it once again. A coast of fun day. Dropping this knowledge here for you and for yours. And um, I told you I was going to drop the video about there was Pan-African conferences before the 1900 Pan-African conference in London. You know what I'm saying? And we were doing it here in America. If you actually want to consider it Pan-Africanism. I'm going to tell you what they called it and what not. We're going to see if they called it Pan-Africanism or not. Also in this document, you will also notice the term African-American being used. So when people say Jesse Jackson invented the term African-American, no, they are quite confused and they are quite wrong and their scholarship is very bad. The term African-American being used, the earliest from my writing, from my knowledge, 1854, Martin Delaney used the term. You know, that's the earliest I got to it. You know what I'm saying? But uh, this term is used, is used here in this document too. You know what I'm saying? So. I'm going to show that too. But this one, the Congress on Africa, the Chicago Congress on Africa, and this is written by the secretary who was there, Patrick Perry Noble. I'm not going to go through everything in this. I'm going to skip around on some parts and just do a couple days, the days, functions, and whatnot, and the conclusion part of it. You know what I'm saying? So let's get started. Number one, the genesis on the, of the Congress. In 1849, Carlisle, who's a racist, Carlisle's a super racist, the intellect and faculty and docility and energy and available value of our black population equals perhaps one of the streets of the Seven Dials. Do I hate the Negro? No. Except when his soul is killed out of him. I decidedly like poor Quashis. To save man bodies and to fill them with pumpkin and rum, it's a poor task for human benevolence if you have to kill their soul. How to abolish the abuses of slavery? Alas, I do not pretend that it can be done in a century. To state articulately, to put into practical law books of what is fair from, black, from white to black, what the relation the maker has established between his two creatures will be a long problem. What are the true relations between Negro and white? What are their mutual duties under the sight of their maker? What human laws will assist both to comply more and more with those? In 1879, Hugo said, the white has made a man of black, of the black. Europe will make the world of Africa. On August 14th, 1893, a Congress on Africa convened in Chicago, which made the press exclaim in excitement and cause the world to realize as never before that Africa is a commonwealth of nations and her people carry, and her and her people, a new factor in history. On receiving the program, the Chicago Post said, the two Congresses will attract the greatest public interest are the Congress on Africa and the Ab on, on that arbitration. The former will bring together the most notable array of distinguished men and women devoting their lives to Africa ever assembled. The Tribune added, in a beehive of the Congresses, none can equal the interest, the industry, or the picturesque the Congress on Africa. Such an array of expert talent has not been congregated in any of these Congresses. The information will barely be fresh, original, and far from theoretical. It will prove a record of what has been done in the opening of the continent to civilization, a statement of interesting facts rather than a conglomerate of theories, most impractical that have the characteristics of the majority of the diverse Congresses. It ought to attract a large audience. On the material side, Africa has made little display in the fair because during this time of Chicago expose of the fair, the Inner Ocean predicted that the Congress would throw new light on a Negro question and surprise people with Negroes as able to debate as white men. The different nations and races represented, the character of the dress and the spirit of the purpose under all made an opening of, Morocco, of the most remarkable gathering yet. Dr. Edwards, Edward, <coughs> editor of the Northwestern Christian Advocate said, now that Congress has made so, such a deep impression upon Chicago, you are moving the city mightily. And it talks about the members of all the people who was there. We're not gonna go through the names of all that stuff, cause you know, a lot of these people, they just say their last name. And a lot of these people, you know, you really don't know. We know them, but then again, we don't know. It's gonna say them again repeatedly up here anyway. Part two, the acts of the Congress. 
The Book of Lepers in a Nutshell and the Condensed 100 Papers into this article is impossible for any expert except Solomon. Eugenius Pearl, Genie in the Bottle. We can only attempt to seize the significant facts and state the silent risk features. So he just gonna cut it down. He just cut it down to the bare facts of each day, or what he considered the bare facts of each day. Let's take a look. The first day, August 14th. General Eaton, Chairman. The first day dealt with geography and history. An honor to the sovereign of the Congo State, a father to Africa, his delegate to the Congress. Mr. Leah Gatti was requested to open the discussion. His Excellency gave the history of the state, emphasizes the United States' relations to it, maintained that it has done much to promote permanence, Christianity, and civilization, and to suppress the liquor tracker and the slave trade. Now, sidebar, the honor the sovereign of the Congo State during this time, a father to Africa, is Leo the Belgian. So Leo the Belgian himself has sent an envoy to this damn conference. Let's see what happens. The non-Belgian view presented was presented at the German of the Congress. Mr. Cherry, just back from three years in the Congo, asserted the state is free only in name. It is a Belgian colony exploited for Belgian's benefit. Man, mainly by officers banished for their country's good and paying his soldiers in rum while liquor flows freely since the Brussels Treaty said before. Mr. Bonnie, president of these world congresses, greeted friends of Africa in the name of all continents, and stated our object to be president in Africa as you unite the world in regenerating her. Dr. Roy welcomed the Congress thus. All races have a hand in making Africa the pariah of the continents. I repeat this again. Dr. Roy welcomed the Congress thus. All races have a hand in making Africa the pariah of the continents. But the hand divine is moving in in this matter. Africans are adding new elements to civilization. It is our to help her advance and pay part of the debt. Caucasians owe Africa. In behalf of Negro citizens of America, Dr. Jennifer replied, we feel assured that this assembly will be by method, learning and influence, give Africa a place in the world's interest and confidence that only nothing else could. You bring the African American, right? Now she's using the term African American, into the best position into this piece of nation. You save American Negroes from obscurity and mortification, which figure has awarded them a place in the exposition, has caused them to feel kingly. Because during the exposition, which is going on at the same time, black people was excluded from that. You know, not call all to be well to write her exposition papers. The response from Africa was made by Prince Massaquai, who stated that among African heathen, there's a great interest in this commerce. Not a tribe knowing about it, but praise for success. Not long ago, there was a meeting of Chief Magi at which the blessing of the spirits were invoked, provided this Congress was not taken from their country to take their country from them. What a comment upon the character and the career of the Christian statements towards Africa. Mrs. French Sheldon responded for the women of Africa. Mrs. Sullerbus, secretary of the Manchester Geographical Society, sent an essay on the geography and the physical editions of Africa in black, illustrated by Blackstone maps. Captain Bill Van Gee and Alex in Kamun favored us with a few words. Aaron Adagazanis, 10 year missionary there, answer whether Africans themselves had done anything to develop Africa. He wrote, in a formation of considerable natives, empires have helped decide in the opening of Africa in this century. In West Central Africa, commerce is almost entirely in built two hands. I still middlemen control the European coast merchants and ivory hunters and rubber hunters of the interior. Madame Abiti of uh, of Italy gave an essay on, on Italian explorations with General Eaton declared to be a revelation about Italy's wonderful work in Africa. Dr. Shystrom says, the center of English, demonstrated the ruins of Zimbabwe to outdate Herodotus and to be in hermetic origins. So he's talking about Minimatapa, as we know now. He's saying that it's older than Herodotus and to be in hermetic origins. 
So I leave a long paper about the beginnings of exploration and progress of discovery contains solar scholarly presentations of the ancient and medieval travels in and around Africa. Captain Oliver English pleaded urgency in his account of Madagascar and analyzed a split that America intercede with France for these outraged people. Mr. Langston, American, held all in thrall as he pictured the Negro in Latin America, 1493 to 1893, 400 years, and brought tidings of tears as to his success in Brazil and the West Indies. If to be here, it was necessary to come through slavery, I, I, I accept slavery gladly, a, hard, a sentiment hardly endorsed by Negro hearers. Dr. Ladd, American, gave almost a good idea to Sudan as a visit he could have predicted in his long shore reopenings. Mrs. Prince Sheldon, Anglo-American, wing of the Congress, charms all by her grace and helpful spirit and knowledge. What she saw and learned in Africa was the humanness of the natives. Without great scope of intelligence and high ideas, they are more eager to attain tools than trinkets, and the eagerness lies in the hope of Africa since the continent can never be civilized by colonization unless colonized by industrialized nations. Again, given the glimpse of the African Arcadia, she said, East African tribes are not in savage simplicity. They are apparent in lessons due to the environment. I have seen men working day after day. They know much of the forces of nature. Among the women are gratitude and fidelity. It does not make such a difference who goes to Africa and how. When women go as companions of explorers and missionary, confidence will spring between them and native women and visitors. The value of the day's work is that while breaking to no ground, no new ground, if the engine feels their all, that the few masses of information scarcely known outside of the American African specialists. <clears throat> the international and representative quality of the Congress, 20 nationalities, appearing and listed enthusiasm and recognition. And it began with great audiences and continued with larger audience. It had a huge audience on Sunday. It closed with the ever increasing event. The next day, August 15th, Bishop Ch Arnett Chairman. Tuesday was Colored People Day. The Secretary had signed African and African American. I'll read it again. The Secretary had assigned African and African American arts as a topic, choosing Negroes themselves to tell of their progress and success. Mr. Johnson, the Wagos, Nigeria, contributed an essay on Negroes as manufacturing trade men, and just demonstrated that many tribes, especially in Central Africa, stand above the Brits whom Caesar visited. Even from European standpoints, they were already civilized. Bishop Turner, American, after electrifying his white friends and pleasing his black hearers, with the assertion that Adam was black, stating facts about the American Negroes in manufacturing and trade that were a revelation to many. Bishop Tanner's American paper about Negro journalism showed that the first paper, newspaper, was the Freedom Journal, was established in 1827, and that since 1865, their journalist has marked improvement. Professor Stewart White wrote about Negro music and pointed out the two characteristics distinguish American slave songs from those of Aborigines. One, the expression of the idea of emotion. Two, the sentiment of almost unbearable religious. He quoted the bark as claiming that our music is to be founded upon Negro melodies. In them, I discover all the need for a great and noble school. Noting in composition can fail to be supplied with themes of that from that source. Professor Tanner, American spoke of Negro painters and sculptors and claimed that the actual achievement proves Negroes to possess ability and talent for successful competition with white artists. Mr. Cable, American, wrote, the Negro achievements in literature has been very slender. His time for production has not arrived. Even on his wrongs, he has not produced an essay which attracts wide attention. Are we not in danger of hurting his cause by seeking his achievement on a plane which has not attained. He has written a few verses, but there is nothing of signal merit. If the Negro has reached real literary production, attained a heavenly gift of style, shall we not find it in his orders? 
but it's not possibly some of the speeches of Douglas, their utterance have included nothing that has shown in even a tendency to become famous. Hmm. In Negro journalism, in journalism, the Negro has accomplished something, though nothing has made himself seriously felt. No papers has been printed by a Negro which a white man have found any need to read. Hmm. Who can prophesize that what he would do? Ruskin, a Scot of Uganda, sent an invaluable scientific monograph of the African climatology, disease, and hygiene to emphasize it justly impossible. E. H. Williams, M.D., American, informed us that the Negroes have made progress as nurses, physicians, and surgeons, but many years must pass before a great advancement is made. They, the Negro, must create opportunities by establishing hospitals and training schools. Only at the Friesman Hospital, Washington, in the Providence, Chicago, can they practice surgery. These forms are sole school for Negro women to train themselves as professional scientific nurses. Bishop Arnett, American, explained, I am a Negro, no African American, and we should fight this battle as Negroes. So even back then, we was going back and forth with the same old thing, Negro, African American, colored, you know what I'm saying? So this bishop who was running a conference saying he's not a Negro, he's an African American. Bishop Henry McNeil Turner spoke on the wrongs of the race. He shook the Negro citizen with emotion. He impressed the whites powerfully. Bishop Stevens of South Carolina, who trained Stevens' battery, and fired the first gun on Sumter. Bishop Turner is right. But he failed to gain the approval of the American colonization, of African colonization and Negro migration to Liberia. Had his audience been Southern Negroes, he would have carried his point. But these Negroes belong to the best class as shown by their culture, intelligence, refinement, and worldly prosperity. Know themselves to be American citizens born to the soul and show no sense of racial duty. Mm. Mm. So that should tell you about the Congress right there. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to read this one more time. Bishop Turner was right about what was going on here. When you read about Bishop Henry McNeil Turner, he wanted to migrate back to Liberia. But in this conference, it fell short of a vote. And the writer of this conference said, had his audience been Southern Negroes, he could have carried his point. But these Negroes belong to the best classes, right? Like a bourgeoisie, a boule, things of that nature, as shown by their culture, intelligence, refinement, and worldly prosperity. Know themselves to be American citizens born to the soil and show no sense of racial duty. Hmm. The post democratic protesting, we had a much patience with Turner's advice. He is all wrong. America will give Negro the Negro power if he is earnest, patient, and strong. Hmm. Mr. Kaysen, American, wrote of the Congo Free State as a factor in the redemption of Africa, warning us. That for a century, the watchwords must be persistent in faith, persistence, patience, faith, and courage. Insisted upon cooperation between political forces and cooperation between religious agencies. Then African civilization will make strides in a history that offers no parallel. John Hutchison, the sole survivor of a family whose lyrics for liberty thawed our land 40 years ago, sang of the Brotherhood of Man. Joseph Cook, a Boston contributed essay on African civilization was to discuss the divine program for the dark continent. He describes the miseries to isolation, slavery, slaving, rum trade, cannibalism, polygamy, paganism, Mohammedism, tribal wars, foreign assertion, climate, and a lack of able native leaders. His pointing out to the abolition, the abolition of slavery on the Mississippi and the Amazon matches the opening for of the Congo to reduce a profound imperfection impression excuse me a profound Im impression so he talked about since slavery got released on the amazon and the mississippi and the congo river was going to be next of african colonization he writes whites may officer the black brown and bronze races but will never themselves find great colonies under vertical sunbeams so as far as the future of africa depends on able native leadership everybody start hope 
hangs over the United States. But he said, as long as the leadership of Africa was bad, the brightest star of hope for African redemption was in the United States. Many of my most cultivated and energetic Afro-American, there go that African term again, you know what I'm saying? So hopefully this, this publication right here kills it off, because it's an old, old publication. Afro-American citizens are sure, after their weapons have been furnished here, they become leaders in Africa. Save the colored races if you want to save the third zone. Save our narrow citizens if you will save the colored races. Now this is the next day, August 6th, Mr. Adam and the late, who is um, Leopold's guy, is the chairman, and language and literature was discussed on this one. So it's a, this one right here, we're gonna go briefly through it. I'm not gonna read it all. Talk about how many African languages are doing, you know, it, that's why he was gonna be doing then and all that type of stuff, you know, but things of that nature. Um, Mr. Gout describes the Hamanic, Shemetic, Lumia and Femuna, Negro, Bantu, out to the Bushmen families of languages of 438 languages with 152 dialects. Hmm, that's some good things to know, I guess. Let's see. Yakul Pasha, Minister of Education in Egypt, wrote that Egyptian folklore is so abundant that it can never be a complete collection. The same story exists in many places and shapes, a diversity due to the centuries of subjugation. The sources are ancient Egypt, Asia, Europe, and Negro Africa. Mrs. Christian, an essay on African American folklore, so that it consists of members of a large number of animal stories, rich in humor and originality, aiming to give the narrated experiences and the views of men and events, the animal types are of, of human characters. Professor Egan, German, writer of the literature of ancient Egypt, revealed that scarcely a spiritual emotion is unmentioned. And we can never absolutely sure our interpretation of Egypt, Egyptian dogmas are. In poetry, Egyptians wrote about everything except for drama. In science, they had theological, astronomical, historical, chronological, geographical, legal, mathematical, and medicine writings, but no philosophy. And we know who stole the philosophy. Just so in case y'all don't know who stole the philosophy, the Greek philosophy is Egyptian philosophy, which they stole. You know, hands down. Grant Bay, an American, maintained that Egypt believes about the entities of the body they possess. Paul's idea of soul, spiritual body, and second death. President Rankin, an American, read a striking old Africa which thought. Mr. Tarling, native Angola, told us that in anthropology and anthropology, Moeller considers the Negrito stock the aboriginal kind of occupants. The Hamanic, the second factor, and blending as the origin of Bantu and other mixed families, and the Shemites, so look how they spell Shem, the original way, S-H-E-M-I-T-E-S, -E the Shemites, as the third element. Lupus made his African family consist of primitive Africans, considering our pure Negroes or Bantus and mixed Negroes, Hamites and Shemites. All right, so they calling the mixed Negroes the Hamites and Shemites. Imitation are not wanting; they all came from Mesopotamia, which we know today is false. That's been killed off. All right, the Bantu and Negro languages alone can similar scholars bridge the abyss between the Hamac and Shemitic languages. The Bantu and the Negro are the same. No connection between the Bushmen and the Pygmies have been proven. In state building, the Bantu Negro has shown ability to govern himself even in great states. Mr. Tyler, an ex-missionary to Zululand, and Prince Massaquai, a big Negro who was come from Sierra Leone and was a real prince, spoke of native custom and popular life. The black prince saying, your rum trade makes all of Africa a field of blood. Hmm. August 18th, and this is, you know, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday was devoted to sociology. Mr. Namar and Safari Egyptians foresee a bright future in the nascent nationality of the now. The eight elements of Egypt native population are, through English training and self-government, become bound by common interests and tend to appoint an Egyptian nationality and statehood 
and on their way to actual independence. All right, so that's what they're talking about. They talking about Egypt gonna be free pretty soon. Of course, it's under Arabs and stuff like, or mixed with Arabs and stuff, whatever. Okay, let's keep on going down. Now they had a Confederate general, General Glenn, ex-Confederate, argued that the American slavery was needful link in the development of the Negro. Hmm. Is that a Pan African Congress too? Huh? It had the same historical place in civilizing him as feudalism with the Caucasian. It controlled the interval between barbarism and freedom. Mr. Merson pleaded with the conservation of the African genius. Colonel Keating, American claim, the credit for early and continuous abolitionist movements for the South. Frederick Douglass, an American, but what can be said of that genius? I can echo the music of Niagara or the voices of the storm, perhaps I can report to him. With white mane rolling down his shoulders, a black lion held us on an hour of his elegance. There is no Negro problem, he explained. The only problem is whether there are enough Christian character and fidelity in white people to live up their profession and their constitution. Mm. Let me read this one more time. This came from Kearney Keating, an American, you know what I'm saying? Said there is no Negro problem, he exclaimed. The only problem is whether there's enough Christian character and fidelity in white people to live up their profession and their constitution. Dr. Ward, editor of the New York Independent, answered the question. What reparations? Am I here? What reparations can America make to the Negro? Now, this is very important right here, because you know, the, the video I brought this, this, this conference up is an ADOS video, American Descendant of Slaves. And they talk, they want their reparations, they want this, you know, they want that. They want reparations back for black people. This is what white folks think reparations is. You know what I'm saying? This is, you know, like Malcolm X said, you know, we talk in the same language. We talk in the same language, but we ain't saying the same thing. You know what I'm trying to say? So this old Caucasians, still to this day, think what reparation is. Dr. Ward, editor of the New York Independent, answered the question, what reparations can America make to her Negroes? His keynote is absolute equality and actual fraternity. Repeal laws forbidding intermarriage of the races, distinguishing blacks from whites when they enter in public conveniences or resorts or separating them at schools. So that's the reparations for, according to them. It's not in a monetary thing. Reparations for them is absolute equality, actual fraternity, and repealing laws that distinguish you that you can't piss in the same toilet, go to the same restaurant they go to, or the same school they go to. That's reparations. You get to kick it in a big house now, all y'all. To the white folks. We hear of much expense and inadequacy in Southern schools. The fault is largely due to indefensible laws which the South persists in maintaining. The duties which the Northerns owe the Negroes is still more important. Under the special obligation to help the South educate her colored citizens, since their higher education must be chiefly accomplished by Northern beneficiaries or philanthropy, you know what I'm saying? So you still, your education system, still gonna be controlled by the white folks. Dr. Roy, an American, demonstrated that the Negroes are doing the education and made his logical luminous of powerful pictures. Thursday proved anew that the Negroes' one natural gift is oratory. Call it what we will, the gift of gab or God-given heaven sense genius for speech. He the speakers who he may, Tom, Dick and Harry, Arnett Douglas and Langston, the Negro expressed himself in song or speech as naturally, as spontaneous as a mockingbird whistles. Okay, so here's the next one. This is Friday. This one was dedicated to the slave trade. The afternoon in relation to the American Negroes to Africa. The night to Africa as a new factor in civilization and sending of our Negro citizens under the 14th and 15th Amendment. Horace Waller, English, asks, would a brush of trees destroy the slave trade? He wrote, too little time has elapsed to a judge's effects. The Blend Treaty or the Brussels Act on paper is one thing. The letter and the spirit worked out with sincerity is another. As you know, the Brussels the Berlin Treaties and the Brussels Treaty divided up Africa and, and, and officially colonized it. It's impossible to, to acquit certain nations with the complicity of slavery. With the zeal of exploitation and commercial undertakings, more obliquely, 
has spread all over him. The interior tribes have drained but one idea of white man. They know how greedy he is. And he'll buy ivories with which the villagers are destroyed. They are aware that the Arabs cannot use it. How can the missionaries gain hearing? There will be those commercially interested who turn the head when these who turn the head when these things are in, a, in their power to stop. The British Anti-Slavery Society recorded what England is doing to suppress the slave trade and slavery. She initiated the Brussels Conference, charging her commissioner in Uganda. Hold up. Now, we just heard, this came in 1893. The British Anti-Slavery Society is still around. You know what I'm saying? So slavery is still popping. Many people don't know, and I got to show another book, too, with um, Tunis Campbell, another guy that don't get talked about in American history. He was talking about they were sipping slavery cats out in 1870, 1880, around this time. You know what I'm saying? How this massacre is them? They were shipping them on boats and shipping them to Cuba. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we got stuff about African history we don't talk about. You might have some, you know, if you're an American, the so-called African-American here in North America, you might have some family in South America. Real talk. All right, let's see. Well, she initiated the Berlin Russell Conference and charged her commission in Uganda to stop enslaving and protect the Nazi land from slavers which were on the East Coast from the Suez Canal to Zanzibar and abolishing slavery in every in her every sphere. Hmm. Let's see. Colonization is limited to regions where races that are accustomed to temperate colonists can thrive. Let me read this again. Colonization is limited to regions where races accustomed to temperate climates can thrive. South Africa may be a central point upon which depends the continent's future civilization. Latin races will occupy other regions. Central Africa, if colonized by Europeans, must be a region of plantations with native labor under European superintendents. Plantations carefully managed are those that prove successful. Mm. Ain't that something? Now, this came to me as one of the most important dis disputes of the conference. You know, I'll read this one now. Um, this one between the famous guy that we know of, Thomas T. Fortune, who um, wrote the Negro, who was the chief editor of the Negro Royal Marcus Gary paper, and uh, um, a doctor. You know, describe the doctor as white as black. But we're going to get into it. To the quarry. I'm talking right about here. To the quarry. What do American Negroes owe to the kin, in, the, the kin above the seas, beyond the seas, right? Let me read this again. To the inquiry, what do American Negroes owe to the kin beyond the seas? They know we're related. You know what I'm saying? That's how you off rip. They already know that we are related and stuff like that. There's some culture continuity, like Shake and Adia was telling. You know, a lot of the stuff trying to break shit up. You know, to let you know they working for who they really working for. Mr. Ames, an American, replied, we can, for the present, best serve our race by remaining right here. Just out of slavery, we lack the qualities by which men conquer difficulties. The best service towards Africa from Negroes in America is obedience to the urgent and ever-present demands for the advancement of our masses to higher and stronger manhood. All right, that's one thought. Dr. Hammond, an American, declared that if colored Americans go back to Africa, they should go only as missionaries. Mm. Mm. Professor Henderson, American, said that American, American Negroes should go, should colonize Africa. Mr. Fortune, American, wrote no. The professor debated on our principles of statementship. The editor presented materials and a self-centered side. The American Negro, Henderson said, has no distinct nationality. He can never bring forth the fruits of a nation here. He can never produce a literature here. Colonization will be the most excellent practical test of our race. So this dude saying go back to Africa and just, you know, become an army, the American blacks over here or the Africans over here in the Americas. So go back to Africa and colonize that mark. You know what I'm saying? Let's see what Thomas T. Fortune said. We are, let me, let me finish this quote. Let me finish this quote. We need consciousness of being called to some of the great work. 
colonization would approve and would afford an opportunity to attain the highest racial development. Mm. Thomas T. Fortune retorted, should a German return to Germany? The question is pertinent as should an African American return to Africa? This answer captured the Negroes, but the Herald Democratic punctured this fallacy. European immigrants rapidly lose their racial identity, right? Which is called um, today called whiteness. They all click clack under white being white. There is no such thing happening with the African because we're not white. You're not Caucasian. Of course it's not gonna happen. If fortune conclusions depend on the soundness of his main proposition, they cannot abide. The case is unique, not to be judged by the same rule as any other adopted people. Bishop Stevens, the sole white man participating in this debate, saw a divine purpose. See how the white man get a divine purpose? <laughs> saw a divine purpose in the history of the Negro, believing him, brought to America to be evangelized, and, and he might be Christianized and colonized and civilized Africa. He advocated government aid for Negro emancipation, but many Negroes agree with Professor Henderson and preferred his plan of private joint stock company. The debate proved that American Negro will stay. So he said he wanted for us to go back and forth for Negro migration, he preferred a joint, a private stock company, such as the UNIA, because that's what the UNIA, well, when the UNIA wasn't a stock company, well, it was, you had to buy stocks and buy the Negro world. So it was a joint, it was a private stock company. And the Negroes agreed, but you know, as you see, many did not follow. All right, Mr. Adams spoke, American spoke on Africa, a new factor in the news in the world story, announcing the civilized world and Africa need each other. Caucasian in Africa, each has its own share, their own share in bringing themselves into a core. The Africans is to stay in Africa. If there are vast white hordes who can live there, the native might be almost annihilated. But most of the tropics of Africa never be home of white colonists. Africa has great material resources. It can, it can be secure only through native labor. The native will not melt away before civilization, nor will they break, rather than bend to the new influence and new conditions of life. The Negro has proved himself a true cosmopolitan. <laughs> Plastics and teachable and adaptable, the influence of civilization cannot destroy him. The fallacy that Africans will work under a compulsion is disproved by the daily records of thousands of Africa. The sole evolution for barbarism would not make it even regular in progress. Some tribes in some parts will lag. The last two decades have been laying the foundation and the task of rearing, and the task of rearing superstructure and the greatest legacy of that century. Dr. Noble argued that the amendments to the federal constitution made the Negro a man, a citizen, a sovereign, are nullified in certain sections, but yet will secure his rights. Mrs. Moore, American, announced that Geo Puma, M. Pullman never allows Negroes to be removed from his palace cars. Bishop Turner announced that neither in Carolinas nor in Virginia had he ever had to ride a Jim Crow car. Now, let's see what else. Barb, this is Saturday. This will come in on Saturday morning. General Eaton reported results of 25 years of Negro education. 1.2 million Black pupils in common schools, other former slave states. 24,000 color teachers, um, 5,000 color youths in high school, 12,000 in school are the same grade and role and controlled by the church. Notice the church controls a lot. 811 college students who went honors at Brown, Harvard, and Yale. 734 theologians, 63 law students, 110 medical students, and 480 deaf, dumb, and blind pupils. President Woodworth, American argued that the problem in Negro education relates to the home and its economics and family aspect, the citizenship to morals and religion and to leadership. The education is that of the race, which is true. You know, your education is your, belongs to your people. And the outlook is for the generations. The process to be carried in a constant connection with the right race. Mm. The process is to be carried on in constant connection with the white race. Every scheme of separation is general. 
Initial impulse must come from us. The education of two races is involved in theirs. Mr. Blair, a Virginia Democrat who fought for the stars and bars, was asked, what is the Southern problem and its solution? He replied, the Southern problem is settled determination of whites to ignore the equality of Negroes, apply them other rights, and keep them in absolute segregation, and suppress them as men and citizens. Cohortion is ruining the South, yet the North is even more responsible for injustice to the colored race. The solution lies in intelligent self-interest. So if it's in their self-interest to keep us educated, to educate us, it will educate us. But it has to be tied with connection to what they want us to learn. You know, not until the South learns that it has to, in her interest to treat the Negro justly, she will attain prosperity. Mr. Blair Arrangement, which has made a decided impression upon a Democratic press of Chicago. Secretary Wilson of the American Colonization Society spoke of Liberia as a factor in the development of Africa and in the New South, stating it's far better qualified for self-government than Sierra Leone. Quoting Bishop Taylor's statement that Liberia is not a failure and if it's not crushed by invasion, it will make an honorable score for Negro nationality, endorsing Buffalo's criticism that Liberia has depended too little on herself. The Negro is capable of development as the white. Secretary Noble characterized Christian um, Africa rum trade as the twin double mission with the slave trade, averting that the cruelest curse put upon Africa, rendering her Christianization impossible, unpeopling parts of the continent, ruining her mess, and checking to the development of resources and making a civilization of Shemra. Since the Berlin and Brussels programs are out of date and unenforced, nothing will end the liquor trade save the application of the golden rule and the revival of a Puritan consciousness. Now the next day was Sunday, and um, I'm gonna spare you all the Christian talk. You know what I'm saying? Because this, if you know, you're just looking at it right here, all the stuff about Christianity, you know. And that was one of their main thing. What comes first? The missionary comes before the soldiers. You know what I'm saying? So they just keep going on and on and on and on and on. Christianity is. They do it all over the place. About how they gotta be with Islam and, and so-called paganism. And you know how all these European places are sending missionaries to get their peace. You know, hell. Even Sweden, Finland, Sweden, you know what I'm saying? In 1881, the Swedish Union missionary began a mission in the Congo. In 1888, one among the Jews and Mohammedans and Arabs. So they just went on ahead and just started, you know, using their Christianity as a blunt force, just a weapon. You know, black people gotta understand that's a weapon. And it's, like I said, it's long, you know, long, long, long. Matter of fact, this is the longest part of the damn, of the other damn conference, of the Congress, the Chicago Conference of Africa, is all about Christianity and how they can implement it in Africa and America and South America. You know what I'm saying? As I said earlier, the missionaries come before the soldiers. You know what I'm saying? So this is the main part of their culture, of Caucasian culture. And one of the reasons why we still are defeated people because we still believe in this stuff. Uh, I heard me get down with this. Let's see. Still in the church? All right. You know, it talks about Haiti, which I'm surprised it even brought up. Let's see. It's a far cry from Africa to America, but the Macedonian call is echoed and reinforced by black republics of the Antilles. A Christian religious is dead to them. Richard Holly of Haiti wrote, Haiti's the second nation in the new world of European domination. On this soil were brought first African slaves. In this land, African slaves first broke their feathers by their own efforts. On January 1st, 1804, these self-emancipated freemen took their place among nations and accomplished a feat without parallel. In 1805, the first constitution provided for tolerance of all religions. The revision has been maintained as a fundamental and unchangeable law. It is to the disgrace of Protestant missionary societies that none availed itself for this opportunity immediately. It is the everlasting enemy 
of the Roman Catholic Church during the three centuries of chattel slavery that it abandoned those freemen at the moment of the national sovereignty and that left the community wholly disorganized for 60 years. When this long spiritual neglect government was put forth in every effort of moral education. Okay, so he was just saying right there, when the Haitians went out, the Protestant church turned in back on them, because like I said, the missionaries, were just so you didn't beat the soldiers, now the missionaries just shook up. So of course they're gonna leave Haiti, you know, they're on the vices. Let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm right here. The United States owing a debt to loving gratitude to Haiti. While still a colony, 800 Haitians, black Haitians among your French allies fought to break the yoke of England from your neck, having helped gain the independence of the United States and gain her own independence alone. So the Haitians helped the United States gain their independence, but the United States did not help Haiti. Haiti secured Boulevard and secured and added five other independent sovereignties to the new world. She has done more than any American power to emphasize the Monroe Doctrine. Hmm. But this is a natural service to a high American policy. A policy, high American policy. America owes spiritual service to Haiti. Now we know who's messing up Haiti now. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, they keep on going to Christianity. It just goes on and on. Like I said, that's, that was like I said before, that's the largest part of the thing. It just goes on, 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 on. Okay, finally over. Have you seen the Christianity, the, the chapter on Sunday about Christianity went about in there 11 pages? <laughs> okay. So let's get to the results of this conference. All right. The Boston Cong a Congressionalist declared the significance of the Congress lies first in the fact that it held all that on a held in the hottest of the summer. It should draw the multitude of interests of listeners and participants, and that so many distinguished scholars should prepare papers or incur exercise for the long, for the long journeys. That a Leopold instructs his ministers to represent him at the Congress and to give the history of the Congo. The Congress was, was significant also for the testimony and the gratitude of the freemen towards those who helped them attain freedom, as well as the disavowal of that service in war. They did not little towards saving the Republic for the faithful in God. For those who took part. For proof of existence of anti slavery spirit, and for an indication of the friends of Africa and the American Negro, in a time when the latter should come to share an aggressive movement, which shall, through missionaries and colonization, win Africa for humanity and God. Like it ain't humans in Africa. You know what I'm saying? Thus, the result of the Congress will fail to be the highest importance that none can believe. Hmm. The Chicago events expressed his judgment. The great Congress was, was unquestionably one of the most notable convictions of recent years in any country. We have had a pan Presbyterian, pan Methodist, pan Agilian, pan missionary, and a pan Congressional Council. But they were greater in meaning and value than any can estimate. But none signified more than this pan African Congress. The program, the most elaborate yet brought forth in certain ways and most instructive and suggestive and really suggesting it in, in most books. But such vocalization around information has been rarely been. So the Chicago events called this a Pan-African conference, you know, which technically it was, because people from all over Africa was there. Now, if we look at it, it was a bourgeoisie type conference, you know, even though we have people from Africa and other places there, and people and women representing Africa, I haven't got to that part yet. But you know, it, it, it technically was what it was. It was a bourgeoisie conference. You know, it was a certain amount of blacks that had you know that made some money and was kind of safe in the north and felt safe in the north with a title and got the white man recognition. And they felt about it. You know, so which, which is this not understandable? And they, like you said, they had no race pride because they felt safe and under the bosom of the white, even less so that the education was co-opted by the Caucasian. You know, so all right. The three characteristic traits that you might get out of this is the Chicago Conference was a natural outgrowth of democracy and Christianity. Mm. The Berlin Conference of eighteen seventy six 
was a gathering of geographers and scientists. The Brussels Conference, the Berlin Conference of 1884, was invoking the interest of colonization, commerce, and statesmanship. The Brussels Conference of 19, 1890, though inspired by humanitarian motives and the attempt of nobler things, confined itself to the slave trade, liquor traffic, and arms, assigned by diplomacy and handled by rum sellers. The Chicago Conference supplemented the endeavors at Berlin and Brussels. It was philanthropic in the character and purpose. It added morals and religious elements to African motivated forces. It realized Mr. White wish an international Congress will be the highest of value. It always doubtful after the Brussels experience whether the European powers will take part in another Congress in Europe. The Berlin and Brussels programs are already out of date. We want not diplomatic ties to every way, but experts and specialists to tell Africa's needs and opportunities. On a neutral ground, such a Congress would, be, would discuss vital African questions with an advantage. The Chicago Congress was not huge in a prolonged missionary meeting. It was not political, religious, or scientific gathering. It was not a Negro Congress. Mm. It was, summer, it was a, not a summer university for African study. It was for each and all, it was more it was a polymer of man taking counsel in the humanities awards. War meaning it was a parliamentary, a parliament of man taking counsels for humanities war. If you look up war in the legal definition, if you're a ward of the state, it means you child or you crazy. You know, if you look it up in Black's definition. Two, the African Congress created the African literature of its own. The African news is so desirous to print the proceedings. And that as a favor, it at its own request have been permitted to publish several essays in advance, all rights being reserved by the Secretary of the Congress of Own Africa. Mr. Bonney still hoped the federal government would publish these African addresses and essays in memorial volume, each author receiving a copy. Bishop Turner declared that there is nothing like the Congress has ever been held and moved it all papers published in a book form, then it would pay $100 for a copy. Bishop Arnett considered the program a liberal education. Hmm. The Congress resolved not to take chances in depending on our national legislator and open a book for subscriptions of $5 and up to publicate a fund. Mr. Bonney previously empowered me to secure a private publisher. There could be no question that 300 foreign missionary societies of the world will subscribe for a volume, which it will, in the judgment of a scholarly Michigan, be the Psychopedia Britannica of Africa. Mm. The numbers costume the Chicago Congress put in place is preeminence. The Berlin, the Berlin Conference consisted of 20 diplomats with 17 experts in their trade, representing 14 nations. The Brussels Conference comprised less than 50 diplomats in their attendance, but Persia and Zanzibar now participated. The Chicago Conference consisted of 100 experts and specialists. The Berlin and Brussels Conference solely deal with Africa. The Chicago Conference consider Africa and America as well as Africa itself. They said consider Africa in America as well as Congress itself. The European gatherings gain no voice to the person most considered. The Chicago Conference embodied a brotherhood of races and gave the Negro every opportunity and turned the searchlight upon the women's work of Africa. Men and women, Negro and white, Christianity and Islam, Africa, America, Europe, and Oceania, North and South, High and Low, Rich and Poor, Austria, Angola, Belgium, in the Congo, Denmark, England, Egypt, France, Gabon, Germany, Nazarene, Haiti, Abi, Italy, Lagos, Liberia, Scotland, Uganda, United States, Victoria, and Zululand. Artists, authors, editors, diviners, diplomatists, educators, explorers, jurists, legislators, physicians, missionaries, rulers, statesmen, scholars, scientists, and soldiers, former slaves, former slaveholders, ex-Confederates, Union veterans, in short, the world made a Chicago Conference on Africa, a Senate of representative race and man, in the world's Supreme Court of Deliberation on this once lost continent. Whether the Congress shall result in practical power over the procedures of Christian governments towards Africa depends on those who spoke and wrote. After a share of this decision could help to create a moral sentiment that should be the power for the righteousness of the African peoples. 
The crisis in African affairs, but the opportunity and responsibility have met. Requires a consciousness of Christian to build hard upon the squares upon every foreign power ruling there. The Berlin and Brussels conference has conferred but slight protection upon African Aborigines. Their comparative failure is due to the failure of Christianity to save the resistant and remnant command. Our rulers must end the slave trade in the rum traffic now. It is a sense that this conference, Congress, have made infections to work so grandly and so noble begun by Livingston and Leopold and Levine. Mm. It should smite at the African liquor business. Foster missionaries in industrial education and insist upon an African American Negro receiving his rights and arouse a nobler self or duty to the can beyond the sea. America has a poignant interest in Africa that Europe cannot have. The two countries have for four centuries as indissolubly linked. In the providence of God, it cannot fail to grow in brotherhood and helpfulness. The African question, can we civilize the traffic? The reply must be yes. Religion, science, missions, and electricity <laughs> will enable the kinds of master savage man and still more savage nature between the tropics of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. It may be, and when able native leadership has arisen, and there's a lack of a painful visibility at this conference, the St. John's of races will take its place among the World Council. If this Congress of Africa created an epioch in her history and helped transform the pariah of continents into a prince among the people, then when the anniversary of Livingston's death is commemorated in 1973 by epioch made opposition of the now, to the soul of centuries to end to come, to the nations, yet to be these deliberations and determinations will sound as pagan as the epic of civilization. God has stretched forth his hands to Ethiopia, and America and Europe are his servants. This came out October, 1990, um, October 1893. So there you have it. That was the Congress on Africa. Um, and the Chicago Conference on Africa. And that's before the Pan, it was considered a Pan African Conference. So there you have it, people. As you've seen, the time African American was used by Biddy, by Thomas E. Fortune, many of people. So people got to use that term African American like it's been never been used before. Bishop Henry McNeil Turner, a lot of people use it. So, so when people say Jesse Jackson made that term up or whatever, that's, that's a falsehood. You know, I can show more documents on that. But the main thing I want to get out of the just of these Pan Africanist Congress, even pre Pan African, whatever, Chicago Congress on Africa, was it was bourgeoisie Negroes in the forefront. You know, they didn't want to go, they didn't want to do all some of the stuff. They just want to get this shit together first. And you see, they had a white man mentality when they said they want to recolonize Africa for Christianity. You know what I'm saying? So they want to send Negroes back over there to recolonize Africa. And re Christianize them, playing the same game that the white man played. So that's what I'm trying to tell people, you know what I'm saying? The setup, you know. And then you get kind of mad when, you know, people are like, well, how come they don't like us, the ADOSs and stuff like that? That's one reason why, you know, you came down, Skyping down, and, you know, dumbing your known down with the Christianity and thought you was better. That could be one reason why. Nobody sits down and take, really take to analyze the problems amongst ourselves. By ourselves, no Caucasians, no, 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 no mixed breed, no whatever. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, this is Coast Skip Fun Day. Much love to you and yours. Hopefully, you learned something. And um, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Peace.